Hello and welcome to the second part of the PowerShell GUI mini series where I explain how to create a graphical user interface with a PowerShell script using WPF or WinForms. In the previous video I showed you this example GUI that displays current crypto coin information and this WPF GUI was created with a PowerShell script, this one here in the background and in the previous video we went through the script and I explained it line by line. If you haven't seen part 1 of this video where I explain how this script works, then you can find the link to the video up there or down in the description. In WPF the GUI definitions are stored in XAML files and in this video I will show you how the XAML file for this particular GUI looks like. Also I will show you how the hot reload feature works that we talked about in the previous video that reloads the XAML file and the GUI while the script is running. And at the end we will convert this PowerShell script into an executable. All the PowerShell scripts and necessary links are down in the description as well as the timestamps so you can skip any part of this video. Before I show you the XAML file, if you like that kind of content and want to see more of it, I have a lot of free dev related videos on my channel and there is more to come, so please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. The XAML file used in this example is inside the WPF app 1 subdirectory. Here it is, main window.xaml, and if I open it, this is how it looks like. So as I mentioned, WPF uses this as the GUI definition. In here you can also identify controls like the button previous, the button next, button about, the coin grid, which also has a few columns like name, rank, price, and so on. And as I mentioned, every control like this data grid, for instance, has its name like coin grid here and by this name we can also access it here inside the PowerShell script. I generated this XAML file inside Visual Studio and that's what I want to show you. So if I close this, you can see that this file is actually part of a project, of a Visual Studio project. Let's open it in Visual Studio. This is the project, down here you can see the XAML file, the source, and up here you can see the designer, so you know how the GUI will actually look like. This is basically just an empty project, it's nothing in there except for this XAML file and I use this project just to create the GUI. I will not explain how to create the GUI inside Visual Studio and how to use the designer because this is a whole nother topic, but just that you know that this option exists. Now let's see how this hot reloading works. We will start the script, the GUI will be shown, then we will edit the XAML file and then we will reload the new GUI. Now this hot reload feature is not a PowerShell feature and not a WPF feature, it is handled by the script itself. So if you take a look at the script, as explained in the previous video, the coin grid itself has a key down event and then if F12 is pressed, this event triggers the reset, it closes the dialog and then this loop down here brings us back to the beginning where the WPF form is reloaded and re-shown. Again, if you want to know more about how the script works, then you can check out my previous part 1 video. Now let's get back to PowerShell. In PowerShell, I will start the script, coin browser. Here it is. And now let's say I want to change the background color to something else. For example, to yellow. Like this. I will save the XAML file, back to the running script. Here it is. And now if I click on the grid, and when I press F12, the new GUI gets reloaded and this makes it very handy if you want to prototype and the GUI is still working. Page 4, yep, everything there. Let's try a different color, this one for example, save it and F12 and now we have this color. Alright, let's close that. So far I showed you how you can load the XAML file from your hard drive. You can also load the XAML file from a server or from an URL. So if, for example, you have a XAML file on a server, then what you need to do, I will change this XAML file path to my server. In my case, I have another XAML file on GitHub and I want to use this one. And now down there where we load the GUI, instead of get content from the file, we need web client download string from the URL. Save it and let's try it out. Run. And it works. Here it is. The last thing I want to show you is how to create an exe executable from this PowerShell script. Open PowerShell as administrator. First we need to install a module called ps2exe. This is the GitHub page of this module ps2exe and down here you can see the installation instructions so this is what you need to run in order to install it and also you can see the instructions how to run it. 
And if you don't like the command line interface, there is also a GUI that you can run. Now probably you have noticed this is not an official Microsoft repository. If you are not sure if you should use this, then maybe you can take a look at the source code, everything is on GitHub, and maybe judge it yourself. So far I had no problems with it, so let's get over to PowerShell and let's install it. So if you haven't done that already, just write install-module-ps2-exe, enter, and a Y for yes. It tries to warn us that this is an untrusted repository, but this shouldn't be a problem. So let's go with Y and enter. All right, done. We can close this one. Now inside PowerShell, navigate to the folder where you have the script that you want to convert to an exe. And in here, write invoke-ps to exe, then dot backslash the name of the script, which is coinbrowserwpf.ps1 in my case. I will call the exe coin browser.exe and I don't want a console. This command will take the PowerShell script and it will just wrap it inside an exe. It will just pack it inside and if you try to execute it then it will run the PowerShell script in the background. And that's why you would usually get also a PowerShell console window with it and then with this parameter we just avoid the console window. Let's try it. Enter. Output file is written. Let's see what we've got. All right, here it is. Let's try to execute it. And here is the GUI. It works. Yep. Now that you have the executable, you can change the execution policy back to restricted, and you will still be able to run the exe. So let's try it out. Open PowerShell as administrator and write set execution policy, scope current user and restricted, enter and a Y for yes, enter. Now if you try to run the script itself, we will not be able to run it because of the policy, but we will be able to run the exe. Coin browser exe, enter. And here it is, the exe is still working. All right. So far I showed you how to use a WPF GUI in PowerShell, and in the next video, in the third part of this mini-series, we will recreate this GUI in PowerShell using WinForms. So stay tuned and thank you very much for watching. If you like that kind of videos and want to see more of them, I have a lot more dev-related videos on my channel, so please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. Again, thank you very much and I'll see you in the third part. Bye.